Apple's new iPad Mini 7? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. So Apple just announced the brand new Apple iPad Mini 7 without almost any fanfare. In fact, if you weren't paying attention, you may have missed it, right? I almost did, for sure. So did Apple do this because the features that they're actually introducing aren't that great? Or is it worth your hard-earned money to upgrade? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. So in this video, we're gonna cover all the new changes with the iPad Mini 7 from the previous version. And we're also gonna then deep dive into both the CPU and the graphics. I have a bunch of kind of charts to show you, to show you the increases in both CPU power, graphics power, things like that. Now they're not gonna be 100% accurate, but they're gonna be about 98% accurate because we won't know until this thing actually ships. But overall, the question is, is are these changes enough to warrant your hard-earned money to upgrade to the brand new iPad Mini 7? And that's what we're gonna talk about. All right, number one is actually price, and price actually stayed the same, believe it or not, at $499, $499, which is great news. Why is this good news? I'm going to show you in a second, but they, they increased basically the RAM, they also increased the storage, and they kept everything the same as far as the pricing. So this is good news for not only the Mac, you know, this obviously iPad Mini 7, but this is good news for what we were thinking on the Macs coming out later, where they might increase to 16 gigs of RAM as well, and we were wondering if they're going to keep the cost the same. On this product, they did, so it starts at $499 still. I think that's a fair price. Okay, design. So this is a pro and a con, but design stays exactly the same. So I know some people wanted it to change, but I know all the people that love the iPad mini, they love it for the design, the form factor. They want the pure kind of iPad experience versus having a keyboard and laptop or, you know, kind of a laptop experience. So overall, I think people are going to be happy with this. The weird thing is they didn't relocate the camera. The camera's in the same position. It seems like everything's basically in the same position. So that's kind of weird, right? But overall, I think you know, we didn't expect any changes, at least this this version of it. So I think that's warranted and it's, it's, I think that's okay. Now colors, I think there's actually one new color. Now you tell me, take a look over at this screen over here. You can see they have the space gray color over here. They got this color called blue. I think this might be the new one. Take a look at this. They call it blue, but to me that looks green. Is that green or blue? Am I going crazy? I mean, I'm not colorblind. That is green to me. Absolutely. But anyways, they call it blue here. Then they have this purple here. And again, let me show you the purple. So the purple, again, is very, very muted. And then they have starlight, which is, I guess, kind of a cool color there. So either space gray or starlight are the two kind of ones you'd normally get. And then purple or blue. But they're kind of those pastel colors. I wish they would make bold colors. I'm just curious. Would you guys like bolder colors? It might be because they're more of a fingerprint magnet that Apple doesn't want to do it. But can't they make some more bolder colors on these things? They love the pastels, and that's what we're going to get. So there's like actually one new color here for all it's worth. And one quick question for the comments. Are you somebody that actually uses a case on the Mini, or do you just leave it kind of naked like that? Let me know in the comments. I'm just curious. All right, next. What's in the box? Well, actually... Look over here. So it says what's in the box. You get the USB-C charger here, USB-C cable, and you get the 20-watt USB-C adapter. So that's actually good news with all these places saying that they're getting rid of the charging stuff and stuff to save the environment. We know what it is. It's all about money. Anyways, you actually get it here, so that's a positive as well. Okay, now let's actually get into the CPU power and the graphics power and stuff like that. So what they're changing to now is the A17 Pro, and it's moving up from the A15. So what does this mean? We're going to dive into this in a second. But overall, I think this is a pretty big upgrade, and it does mean Apple Intelligence, which we're going to talk about. So finally, we, we were kind of worried. You know, I guess we weren't worried. We knew it would get Apple Intelligence, right? But it's got kind of the, the lowest tier there, the A17 Pro. I think the, this they have a ton of chips left over from the iPhone 15 Pros, and they actually want to use them. So I think they just have them sitting there. So they said, let's just throw them in the mini. And that's what they did. But let's take a look at these statistics to see what this really means in the real world. Okay, so here's the comparison here. This is from nanoreview.net. Definitely check them out. Great site. So it's the A17 Pro right here. This is in the brand new iPad mini versus the old iPad mini over here, A15 Bionic. So what are some key takeaways? Basically, a new a smaller transistor size on the new version so three nanometers versus five nanometers three nanometer chip is basically on the ipad mini 7 the brand new one it does support 50 percent higher memory bandwidth so 51.2 versus 34.1 gigabytes per second that's going to be big especially when we find out there's more ram in here in a second performs 25 percent better in floating point computations 17 higher 17 percent higher um, cpu clock speed so 7 uh, 3780 versus 3230 megahertz uh, shows up better in basically this cell phone score. So we're going to kind of scroll down here. Let's just get to the meat and potatoes here. Here we go with Geekbench 6 right here. You can see that it's going to be 27% higher on the single core. So 27% increase in performance on single core Geekbench 6. 
Then over here, we can see it's up to 30% of multi-core scores right here. So a 30% increase in multi-core uh, multi scores in Geekbench 6, and that's actually pretty significant overall. And we'll talk about this in a second. This is where it gets a little bit more, I guess, hard to figure out right now. Because you can see here, this is not a huge increase. It's a 7% increase in 3D, 3D Mark. This is more of a graphical performance kind of benchmark here. So we had 93, 95, up to 10,008. So it's only 7%. And we just found out that this chip on the Mini only comes with five GPU cores instead of six like it did before, I think, on the iPhone. So it kind of lost a core there. But overall, we'll have to see how this hashes out because there's a lot of other things like a better neural engine in there and more RAM we'll talk about and other things that are going to make this kind of kind of you know we don't know if it's a one-to-one -one comparison but overall you get the idea it's still going to be increasing and it has to all be done for apple intelligence now all these changes including the a17 pro is obviously for apple intelligence and i'll show you here on their advertising on apple they're advertising this already on their website it's all about the new apple intelligence it's not really you know, focusing on too much on the features of the actual new device because there isn't a ton of changes but overall this they're getting it all ready for apple intelligence now the one thing about apple intelligence though as we all know is it hasn't even really come out yet until 18.1 as of making this video and a lot of this stuff won't even come out until 18.2 18.3 18.4 18 so i think apple was caught a little bit flat foot footed on this basically and they, they're a little bit behind i think they actually saw ai you know coming so fast that they had to do something they announced it a few months ago but we're still a few months away from all this stuff kind of coming out here so i think they're a little bit behind a lot of people argue with me about this i think they'll do it right i think they'll probably win at it eventually but i think they missed the boat a little bit on it now, i'm not a huge user so i don't care that much but i know a lot of people are what do you think okay battery time now is it improved well apple does not publishes anywhere but just based off of what it is we're going from a five nanometer chip to a three nanometer chip usually better performance on battery the the actual design including the battery is the exact same size so overall we don't expect more than about 10 percent increase in battery but because of that difference in, in the actual chip and it being better with battery performance and things like that we expect anywhere from zero to 10 percent of battery increase so we think it's going to be slightly better but apple hasn't published it now the USB-C port's actually going to 10 gigabit per second versus five gigabit per second. So it's doubling in speed. Now this is great for people that take, you know, movies and stuff on their iPads. Don't be one of those people. But you get the idea. So if you're moving a lot of data on or off, this could help. You know, obviously it's doubling the speed of the USB-C connection. You gotta love it. All right, one of the big features, again, where the cost stays the same is Apple is actually doubling the RAM. It used to have four gigabytes of RAM. It's going up to eight gigabytes for the Apple, you know, basically Apple intelligence is the reason why. They don't really publish this anywhere, but we looked into it. We found out that it's doubling the RAM. So these are now gonna have eight gigabytes of RAM, which is great. Now, I think the actual biggest change of all here is gonna be the storage they give you. Take a look at the screen here. So 128 gigs is standard now. It used to be 64 gigabytes, and it's the same cost. So 128 gigs for $4.99. Apple never gives you anything free, but they finally did here. And before, it actually started at 64, and then they charged you 150 bucks to move to the next tier. Here, if you wanna to go to 256, it's 599, so it's only a $100 increase. So that's actually better as well. Now, the thing that you do not wanna do is you don't wanna go up to 512. That goes from 599 to 799 that's a 200 dollars increase to go from 256 to 512 i don't think anybody should go up to 512 and buy that otherwise you should buy like an air or something like that don't don't even think about this but i think these first two tiers are great and apple's finally giving us something we've asked for we're also getting Wi-Fi 6E versus Wi-Fi 6. Apple's saying this is up to two times faster, whatever that means. It just basically gives you another band and a lot faster connectivity at shorter distances. Long story short, it's better. We're also getting Bluetooth 5.3 versus Bluetooth 5. With all the new Apple devices like EarPods and stuff having Bluetooth 5.3, this is kind of a warranted change here as well. It's welcoming change. It's pretty good. Now the camera appears to be exactly the same as well, except for one really small change they detail. What Apple says is they're changing from basically HDR3 support to HDR4 support. Now, I mean, you know, I'm in the, I have a ton of Apple stuff. I have no idea what that means. If you guys do post in the comments, I don't think it's gonna affect me that much considering I have absolutely no idea what that does. I mean, maybe it's important, maybe it's not, but that's the only change really with the camera for all it's worth. 
The display itself also, it stays exactly the same. So it's 8.3 inches. It's not an OLED screen. I think everyone, this is the big thing that everyone wanted. It probably wasn't realistic with the price and how slow they're kind of rolling out OLEDs here, especially on Macs and stuff, but it doesn't come with an OLED. It's gonna be the same 500 nits. It's gonna have a, a P3 wide color gamut as well, 500 nits of brightness. And uh, I think they're gonna fix, based on Apple and a lot of rumors out there, the jelly scrolling issue, they keep talking about that. So that should be fixed. We can't test it right now. Overall though, I think, you know, for all it's worth, we wish OLED was probably the biggest thing people wish for, but it's not coming. All right, a couple other things to note here as well. It will now support basically the Apple Pencil Pro, which is nice and new. It's kind of a new feature, obviously, for this. So it's going to support the Apple Pencil Pro, but it's not going to support the Apple Pencil second generation any longer. Um, but it will support the, the really cheap USB-C pencil if you want to pick that up for the cheapest price. But now it supports that one and also the Pro, but I guess it's getting rid of the second generation. The other big change that they made, I guess, kind of to the design, I don't know if it's design change or not, but the little nano SIM card that used to be able, a physical card used to be able to go in, they got rid of that altogether, so you can only use an eSIM now. So I guess a lot of people might be upset about that. But even though it has an eSIM, or even when it had the other card, they still don't allow you to make phone calls off of this. And I think that was another feature people wanted or were expecting in this kind of version of it. They want to be able to make calls, right? They can't do that anymore. You know, you still can't do that for some reason. That's going to be for data only. So for all it's worth, they got rid of the physical nano SIM card. I don't know why. And then according to some of the notes here, it looks like you can pick one of these up as soon as October 23rd. Obviously, depending on when you watch this, this might be passed already, but you'll still get some information from all the changes in the video. Okay, so in the comments, I want to know a couple things here. If you have an iPad mini right now, an older version, do, do these changes warrant you to make an upgrade? Are you going to actually upgrade to the new one? Now, no Mac haters or Apple haters. I don't want to, I know you're going to post. If you actually have the one and you like Apple stuff, is this enough for you to actually make an upgrade? I'm just curious, so post in the comments. Now, I know people that love the actual Mini here, they love it, right? They love the design of it. I think they love it just because, I, again, I'm not exactly sure, so post that in the comments as well. My philosophy is maybe they're more of a gamer. It can easily hold it in your hand. Also, maybe they just want something a little bit bigger than their phone, but it's, it's kind of in that weird spot. You know, I obviously have one sitting right here. This is the, the uh, what is this, the 10th, 10th generation. We're waiting for the 11th generation to come out soon. But overall, you know, we, we get the idea. I mean, there's a reason, there's a small group of people that love this thing, and I just want to know, what do you use it for? Why why do you love it so much? Is it the form factor? Are you glad it changed? Did you want to see a new design? I'm just curious to take some data here because overall it's just in a weird spot for me because it's so small. But I understand like gaming and stuff it's great on, but you know, you tell me. I want to just hear from the people that use it out there. What do you use it for? Now either way people are going to say, well should I wait for the next one? Well. Probably not, because I'm guessing this won't be upgraded for another two years, believe it or not. So you can probably have a two year wait for the next one. And um, that's gonna maybe have OLED and stuff like that later on. But for two years, if you have an older version, maybe you've had that for a year, you don't wanna wait forever, right? It's 499, the base model, and 128 gigs of RAM, and eight gigs of, of store, or eight gigs of, of RAM. So it's gonna be a good system overall. It's gonna be snappy enough, I think, for Apple intelligence. It's gonna warn some, you know, some people to upgrade, maybe, maybe not the version right before this, but a couple of versions, you know, down the line. So, but don't wait because I think it's going to be another two years. They're not going to do it next year. They're probably going to skip a year. Apple's starting to do this with a lot of their products and they're going to wait that time and finally release it two years from now. And then finally in the comments as well, let me know what Apple missed on this. What are the features that they completely missed or struck out on? I'm just curious. Again, we have a lot of data that we can get from a lot of people that use this. So just post in the comments, what, what did they miss here? What do you not like about it? Okay, so we're gonna wrap this up. Thanks again for supporting the channel. And uh, you know, I'm a small channel, so definitely support me if you can. Subscribe, put a comment in. It definitely you know, helps the algorithm out. As I grow, I'm gonna plan on doing some more live shows, maybe some giveaways and stuff. Overall, I just gotta get a little bit bigger, so definitely help me out. And I love you guys watching the videos and I love making them. So we'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.